Hey everybody, this is uh, Mr. Munson, Unit 11, Solids. So we're going to be working on concept number three, area and volumes with solid, similar solids. Now these two figures in this picture, Mini-Me and Dr. Evil, they're definitely similar figures. All right, let's go ahead and get started. But before we get too far into this video, I want to encourage you to look down in the description box and you'll see a link to some notes. So if you click on that link, you can download and print up the notes um, that have the pictures in them. So you can just add your notes to it and you don't have to draw the pictures. Then you take those pieces of paper and you staple them or tape them into your video notebook. Okay? Don't put them in your three ring binder. That's not where they belong. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so if you look at these two figures here, um, I might ask you, are these two figures similar? So what you'd want to do then is write a ratio between their corresponding lengths and see if those two ratios, in this case two, um, are equal to each other. If they're not, then the figures are not similar. Okay? Go ahead and put me on pause and write two fractions, two ratios, uh, write the relationship between corresponding lengths and see if they're the same fraction. I wrote the relationship, of course, between 15 and 25 because those are both radiuses or radii. And, of course, 36 goes with 60 because they're both the heights. Now, once I turned them into decimal, I found that they were equivalent. Now, what I want to encourage you to do specifically in this unit and now until the end of the year is make sure that you can reduce your fractions. And so instead of depending on this, you want to reduce these fractions and check to see if they're the same. Remember, our calculators in class have a fraction key, um, allow you to go math fraction, turn these into reduce decim or reduce fractions. Uh, if you have your own calculator, make sure that you have that ability and how to do it. I'm going to reduce these fractions and we're going to look at them from there. All right, so after reducing, I find that three fifths. Now listen, this is not an option. It's not like, no, I prefer the decimal better. Where we're headed, you're going to need to know how to reduce fractions, either through the calculator or in your head. All right, let's take a look at this figure once again, but let's pretend like I don't know this is 15. Let's say you actually walked into this problem, that was X, and you were told already that these figures are similar, okay? Um, so if that's the case, what I would want you to do is be able to solve for that X. Now, similar figures, we find that their lengths, their corresponding lengths, are proportionate. That means that if I write a ratio between any two corresponding sides, that ratio, that fraction, is equal to another this equivalent fraction from any other corresponding sides. So what I want you to do is write yourself an equation to solve for x and then solve for x. Here's a hint. Again, I'll use the word. It's a proportion. Go ahead and put me on pause and come back and check your work. Well, that's the proportion I wrote, and that hopefully makes sense to you. I said 36, the height is to 60, as x is to 25. That makes total sense to me. I hope it does to you. Just solve that, and I find that x is, of course, equal to 15. Now, that's to be expected since we already knew the answer to begin with, but pretend like we walked into the problem not knowing it was 15. All right. All right, now let's take a look at this figure. I want you to check to see if these two figures are similar on your own. Come back and check your work. Now, I wrote these ratios, as you'll find down here. I related this 6 to this 8, this 8 to this 12, and, of course, that 12 to that 16. Now, I want you to rest assured I did not do it by saying this 6 is on the left-hand side, so that's going to go with the 8. If I'm stuck and I have no other ability to think through it, then that's what you should do. But logically, that doesn't make sense because the figure over on the right-hand side could be flipped. So what you would want to do is, in the right triangle of the base, 6 is the smaller of these two sides. That's the reason I related 6 with 8. That's a logical reason. A larger side goes with the larger side. And, of course, the height goes with the height. That's how I got these fractions here. Now, once I turned them into decimals, I found that they were not equivalent, right? So that one there does not make sense to be a 
uh, that one keeps it from being a similar, similar solids. Okay. Now let's change them into reduced fractions. Again, that's what we're going to be doing a lot of in this chapter. So you need to be able to do that on your calculator or in your head. And you can see from the fraction point of view, that one doesn't work. All right, let's move on. All right, let's start up here uh, with the scale factor. Okay. Now, if you remember back when we did similar figures, we found scale factor for two-dimensional shapes, polygons, you know, triangles, all this. Scale factor is basically a ratio that we write, a fraction, between any two pair of um, any two corresponding sides. So what I would like you to do is look at these two cones and write a scale factor. Um, and um, write, Go ahead and write the scale factor and see if you understand what it is that we're looking for. Now, depending on which side you chose, uh, 3, which is the height, goes with 4.5, 4, and 6, which are radiuses go together. Now, on my calculator, I did math fraction uh, for both of these, right? And it turns them into two-thirds. We're not allowed to have decimals and denominators or in the top when we're talking about scale factors. So always use your calculator or your head to reduce it into fractions. So what this is saying is the scale factor on this is 2 to 3. That means for every two inches over here, there's three inches over here. And that makes sense because this is larger. For every two inches here, there's three inches here. Okay? All right. Scale factor. All right. Let's go over to this area here, the area of the bases. So the bases here are circles. And I want you to go ahead and find out the area of those two shapes. Um, if you're not sure how to do that, go ahead and Google it. Do the work. Come back and check your answer. All right, welcome back. So the area of the, the circle off to the left is 16 pi, and the area to the one to the right is 36 pi. Now, the units are really important, and you're, it's going to be important for you to understand that what, we're, what the big idea of this video is today. And if you're missing units, it's going to be a little bit more confusing. You have to understand we're finding area, so that's going to be inches squared. Okay? All right, very good. Now, go ahead and uh, put me on pause and find the lateral area for the left one and the lateral area for the right one. If you're just copying this down, that's why you're not able to do this on your own. This is why you're confused. You are not pausing in the video to do the thinking now before you get to the tr do it problems. All right, go ahead and put me on pause. If you need to, Google how do you find lateral area of a cone, and you'll be able to find it. Otherwise, find it on your formula sheet and see what you got. All right, so the lateral area for the one to the left is, is uh, 20 pi inches, and the one to the right is 45 pi inches. Very good. Next slide. All right, now I want you to find the volume of these two shapes. Go ahead and put me on pause. Do your research, whatever you need to do, to see if you can think through. And if you think through it now, you won't have to be trying to figure it out on the test. Okay, put me on pause and come back and check your work. All right, and there you have it. There are the volume measures for these shapes. All right, now we're going to get back to those numbers in a second. We did it for a reason, but I want to look at a relationship that we know is going to be true between um, scale factor, area ratio, and volume ratio. Now, what we find is, um, remember, the scale factor is a ratio between any two corresponding lengths. So when we're talking about lengths, we're, we're talking about things in inches over inches or feet over feet and so on. Okay? What we find is that the relationship the scale factor has with the area ratio is this. Whatever the scale factor is, then the area ratio is those numbers squared. And that makes sense because the units are squared. Now, see if you can predict what you think the volume ratio would be given a scale factor of A over B. Just put me on pause. If you think this through and come up with it on your own, you'll own this. So 
So hopefully you said A cubed and B cubed. And that makes sense to me as well because the units of measurements for the volume are inches cubed and feet cubed and things like that, right? All right, so distance measurements are measured in inches and feet and it creates scale factors like A over B. If I know the scale factor, then I can come up with the area ratio. And if I know the scale factor back here, I know how to come up with the volume ratio. Now, the truth is that if I know the area ratio, I can just take the square root of it to walk it back to being what the scale factor is. And I'll talk about that in a second. I'm going to give you these and ask you to find the other ones. The first thing you're going to want to do is take whatever scale factor you get that's up here and immediately turn it into a scale factor. Okay, so whatever ratios, I should say, that you get that are like the volume or area ratio, you'll turn them into scale factors. All right, well, let's go back to the problem that we did with the cones and take a look at the evidence that what I just said, there's a relationship between the scale factor, the area, and the volume. Okay, so the scale factor, if you remember, was 2 over 3. Now, according to this, the area ratio should be 2 over 3 each term squared, which gives me 4 ninths. Okay, let's check that out. I go ahead and find, I go ahead and grab the two areas. Now, this is why I'm not multiplying through by pi. This is a great example of why some of you multiplying through pi, even though I've told you don't do that unless I tell you to, um, you're going to make this a mess because you want, once you multiply by 3.14 or uh, pi, it's going to turn it into a mess. So if you look closely, these two pi's here will cancel each other out. And so that leaves me 16 over 36. And when I use my fraction calculator or my mind, I can turn that into 4 ninths, exactly what I predicted, 4 ninths. Cool? All right. Then when I grab the lateral area, which are also area measurements, I found the area in B1, B2, those are area measurements. Um, I found it to be 20 pi, and once again, the pi's cancel out, and I'm left with 20 45ths, which reduces to 4 ninths. So it doesn't matter what area I'm finding, lateral area, base area, surface area, they're all area units, and when, when I look at their ratios, they're going to be 4 to 9. All right, so for the volume, I want you to go back and find the volume ratios, or the volumes, write a ratio and see if you can um, uh, reduce it down. And then get it to that, that reduced fraction and see if it makes sense that whatever it is, okay? So go ahead and put me on pause, see if you can come back and check your work. All right, well, if you got it right, 16 pi over 54 pi, which the pi's cancel and reduce to 8 27ths. And that makes sense to me as well because it would be 2 to the third power and 3 to the third power. Remember, we're volumes in cubes. And so I take the scale factor and I just cube everything. And I get 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Hopefully that totally makes sense to you. All right, well, here's a quick bonus that you can do. Um, so if you understand what we've done so far, you should be able to do this problem, okay? You're going to be able to come up with a scale factor, and now I'm going to ask you to find the volume of this thing to the nearest thousandths of, uh, of uh, ounces. So you want to write a, a proportion and all those different things, okay? So have fun with that. Put that on a separate piece of paper now. Okay, so let's take a look at these two figures, the two um, cylinders. And what we are told is the surface area um, of one of them is 125 pi, the other one's 20 pi. And so we want to find the volume. So unless we're given the scale factor, which is the ratio between any two given lengths, um, in this case we're given area ratios, right? And we want to find volume ratios. No matter, unless you're given the scale factor, you're given one of these other ones, the very first thing you want to do is take your number and send it back to the scale factor. So if you're given the area ratios, you're going to want to take the square root of it. If you're given the volume ratios, then you're going to want to have to do this thing called the cube root. If you look under your calculator, you'll see that symbol. Uh, if it's a TI, it's under math. So the steps of solving this is to simply put um, the um, area ratios underneath that AA. 
go ahead and cancel out the pies in this case and then reduce your ratio. The next thing you do is you take the square root of the top and square root of the bottom. Now that I have the ratio for the, the lengths, 5 to 2, I can now find the volume ratio by just simply cubing all that stuff. So the ratio between the volumes is going to be 125 over 8. Okay, that's it. We're done. Go ahead and write your summary. And uh, do, uh, here's your do it problems. I'll zoom in so you can see uh, have a better look. And there you have it. Have a good one.